Up until this lesson, we've so far been looking at surface area. How much 2D space fits around the 3D shape you're looking at. 2D space fitting around a 3D shape. Now, dealing with 3D shapes, we're going to deal with a 3D measure about the shape, which is volumes. So we're going to sort of rewind, go back to the beginning of our shapes, and instead of going surface area, surface area, surface area, we are going to inspect all these kinds of shapes for volume. Okay? So here's an example. This is about as simple as it can get. This is a, what is the name of the shape again? Rectangular. A rectangular prism, thank you very much. And you can see I haven't drawn in the edges that are hidden yet, so let's do that now. And what you've got here is pretty straightforward to evaluate. What does volume mean? Volume is about how much 3D space does something occupy, okay? Now in this case it's actually really simple because if you recall, and if you have another colour, that will be really useful. What you've got is this rectangle on the front copied over and over and over again like slices of bread all the way back. Every time you slice you'll get that same shape. Right? So the volume of this is clearly going to depend on that cross section. Okay? So I'm going to write V equals now, I know a lot of you can actually leap straight to the answer, or even the working required for the answer, but I want to note for you that there are these two components. There's the cross-section. Right? That area, that's the first place you've got to start. That's what makes the prism a prism. Okay? What you multiply that by... Hmm. The cross-section here. If we call it that 4 by 3 on the front, Okay, so let me just uh, color that in. If I call this the cross section, what would I multiply that by in terms of numbers to get the volume? Yeah, I mean? Breadth. Yeah, okay, so I guess you could sort of call it the, the breadth or the depth or something like that. Um, or length, really, or maybe even width. It's kind of weird when you don't really know where you're measuring from. I'm going to give you an even weirder word, which no one has said yet, but it's actually the most helpful. I'm going to call this the height. Now you would look at that and say, of all the words to choose, why height? We unambiguously use height to mean up and down, right? But I'm going to push on this a little bit. Remember when we were looking at triangles? In fact, the one I just gave you, uh, I think I gave you like a 5 over here and, what was that, 6 plus 3 or something? Yeah. So that's 9, okay? Now you remember when we looked at shapes like this, I gave you one yesterday, I believe, where I gave you this length, and it's not the height, is it? Right? You can't use that for area. What do you got to do? Yeah, you've got to work out this guy, the real height, not this imposter height. What makes this height more important? What is it? There's a feature I'm not drawing on here. It's perpendicular, right? So it's not just height. Height's just kind of shorthand for perpendicular height. Now, have a look at this triangle. What is the height perpendicular to? <coughs> wait, wait, wait. Come back over here. Here, when I say that's the perpendicular height, this dotted line here is not perpendicular everything. It's not perpendicular this or this. What is it perpendicular to? The base. Very good. So you've got to think about which feature are you measuring from. Okay. Now in our prism, what it's perpendicular to is not the base. There's no, like, which shape is which. It's perpendicular to the cross section. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny, sir. Cross sections are funnier than I thought. Now, the reason why I point that out is because, depending on how your shape has been drawn, that perpendicular height, if you're lucky, it might go up down, just like most heights do. Or like in this diagram, it might go into the diagram, or sideways, or anything. You've got to look for where the cross section is and then measure. Okay? Now, the reason why this works is because if you think about said shape, okay? So this is, like this guy, let me hold it, right? There we go. Can you see it? Uh, three, four, and count kind it. Of, did I do it right? That's six cross. Yeah? Okay. What you're doing is you're saying, look, each cross section I can work out independently, and I know I'm just going to keep on getting catch. The cross section, catch, over and over again. No, I got, no, I'm going to hurt something. 
I'm going to get it over and over again. Right? So it's literally, let's do the numbers now. In this, in this one, what's the cross section? It's 3 times 4. Right? And how many of them do I have? After those ones I threw away, I would have had 6 of those cross sections. Yeah? And that's why 12 by 6, that's 72. And this is cubic centimeters. Okay? So, the reason why I highlight this, rather than just going straight to the numbers, right, is because this helps us understand, this way of understanding will work with any prism. Even prisms that are like, what on earth is this called? I don't know, like a te Tetris shaped prism? I don't know what we call it. It's still a prism. Why is it still a prism? Ryan, what are you still <laughs> Because if you go way back to our first lesson... Are you guys right? Yeah. You sure? Our very first lesson we said, so long as your cross-section all the way is the same, it's a prism. Which is why, even though it sort of follows different rules, where is this one? We are lumping together cylinders with prisms this time. Okay? Because a cylinder, like a prism, has a consistent cross section. It's just that the cross section happens to be a circle. So your cross section, you put like, you don't need to write this, but you put a pi r squared there, and then you multiply by the perpendicular height. Which is why the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. Okay? Or whatever it is times h. Does that make sense? Yeah. 